teams care when it comes to making up those absences in the front court. So just game one doesn't mean that there is an adversity. Both sides already kind of battling through it. Here's a look at Jalen Terry. Thanks, Mike. Jason Ross Jr. just settles here to Windtrust Arena in Chicago for the return of Big East basketball on Fox. DePaul hoping to prove some people wrong this season, and they hope to start this off on a high note in the non-conference against a confident Loyola Maryland team out of the Patriot League. Your Ane and Golden DK to tip it off in the first ever meeting between DePaul and Loyola Maryland. Off we go. It's DePaul group, 14-1 in their last 15 season openers at home. They've won four straight season openers. Emoji Gibson just right off the bat, a player you really like at that point guard spot. Kind of a new look for DePaul this season. Your Ane will be filling in for the missing Nick Ogenda. He would have been a key returner for them. He's out day to day at that forward spot. Shot clock already winding down on DePaul. Ane has to take it himself and draws a foul on this opening possession. And high IQ basketball for Ane. He gets the ball deep on the post. His footwork is not right. He doesn't force it, Jason. Kicks it back out. Gets rewarded. Nice drive to the basket. Gets rewarded with the two free throws. Ane at six foot ten. Again, they're, they're missing some size with Ogenda out at six eleven. Here's a look at Nick Ogenda, who averaged career highs in his points and rebounding a season ago. Key shot blocker for them as well. I feel really bad for that yeah. kid. He had taken the next step. The coaching staff is so high on his improvement this summer. We wish him well. But what a luxury to have another shot blocker right behind him to come in and protect the rim. He, he's, a, he's a great personality as well. We spoke to him before the game. Seemed to be in high spirits. Was in high spirits at practice yesterday. The Loyola Maryland team played an exhibition a week ago. Again, out of the Patriot League. Shot clock winding down for Dion Perry, one of their freshman newcomers who they really like. Tossed it away. Turnover on their first possession. And back comes the ball. Jalen Terry all the way to the rack. Couldn't finish. Ane there to clean it up. Golden DK trying to snare the board. Couple of chances for the ball there. No dice, but a good opening defensive possession. Nearly forcing back-to-back -back turnovers. This is what Loyola likes to do. They like to grind you, go side to side, break you down, and then cut back door. They will use the entire shot clock. You have to defend wisely and rebound so you can get out and run against them. The ball staff talked about not overplaying on those back cuts that you mentioned. Here's Javen Johnson, his first shot of the season, a bit strong. I like the shot by Johnson. He's a great three-point shooter. He's long and athletic. He's flying under the radar, according to Coach Stubblefield. He's going to be a star this year. I look for him to have a big game tonight. He's defending here. A step back three goes down for Kenneth Jones, who averaged a career high in points and assists a season ago for Loyola, Maryland. Key player for them. Jones, one of the better shooters in the country, moves to the wing with the immersion of Perry. And he told me before the game he's much more comfortable out there. He's going to have to score a lot for his team, especially to win this game tonight. Loyola, Maryland lost their leading scorer from a season ago, Cam Spencer. There's Tony Stubblefield in his second season on the DePaul sideline. Did an excellent job last year, went 9-1 in his first 10 games. That matched the best 10-game start for a rookie head coach in program history. He's trying to avoid that injury bug. It hit him last year. It's already hit him this year. One of the top recruiters in the country. Runs that Oregon offense, looking for better defense. A nice flex cut, an easy layup. The pass made there from Emoji Gibson was beautiful. He is a key addition for them in the playmaking category. Transfer from Oklahoma. Led the Sooners in scoring a season ago, and they need him to distribute as well. Early 4-3 start for DePaul. Drive from the 5-8 Perry off the mark. This is the athleticism that's been such a key fabric of this DePaul program over the last couple of years, but Terry threw that away. Here's a look at Tavares Hardy, Chicago area native. Played his high school ball, Providence Catholic, then went on to play at Northwestern, has a ton of friends and family 
in the stands today. Nice Billy played for Northwestern as well. There's another turnover for his team, though. They're struggling with that early. And your net hammers it down, taking advantage. What a start for your Ane. Defensively, he's been stout. He's been very smart at the offensive end. And if he can get out and push the rock like that in the fast break, I mean, that's just trouble for a defense when a big fella's coming right at you with a little Euro step to finish. There is three. Comes up well short. Again, another arm up from this DePaul defense. Emoji Gibson, his sixth year of college basketball, so poised. Tried to lob it up there for a nay. I've been tipped by Golden DK. A couple turnovers for DePaul already. Those are the types of passes, Jason. They have to get out of their game. They've got to at least get clean shots at the basket so they can clean it up with offensive rebounds. And they want to improve on this end of the floor. In 15 and 16 last season, Golden DK, a pretty hook shot. Over his fellow 6'10 player, the defender, Yorinay there. Tavares is looking for more scoring out of him this year. It's a nice little bump, chest bump, create a little space, baby hook. It's an unstoppable shot. Gibson with eight to shoot. Nifty dribbling in the lane. Finds a newcomer in Earl Penn. His first bucket in a Blue Demon uniform is from distance. Gibson, one of the best in the country of collapsing a defense. He gets by that first layer. Everybody has to help off. Passes it to the open shooter. Easy shot. That's just what he brings to the table. He's going to be a tough guard in the Big East. He's looking to run again here. Javen Johnson hopping the other way. Pull up three. I like Book it. it. Javon Johnson transferred from Iowa State last season, played a handful of games after graduating from Iowa State, moved over to Chicago in December. So he had a lot of experience with reps with this group in practice and in some games, and it's showing early. Turning turnovers into points. 12-5 start for DePaul. seven-point edge for DePaul on a 10-2 run prior to that last break. This DePaul team reloaded. You got seven new faces on the roster, five of which are transfers. Here are four of them. The only one out on the graphics is Caleb Murphy, who's out tonight. But these four just going to be key. We've already seen the impact of Emoja Gibson. You have to replace your guys every year, it seems like, and it's hard to do. You have to keep things simple early, but a lot of these guys have so much experience, and they're older, 
You're going to see Johnson playing in the NBA. I mean, he is the prototypical wing. He's long. He can shoot the three. He can guard. And I like his aggressiveness early in this game. Some of those shots are bad shots for regular players. They're not bad shots for him. He has to put pressure on the defense constantly. Lost Javon Freeman Liberty, who's now playing professionally from last season's roster. Brandon Johnson was a key player at Forge. They're trying to fill the void left by those two names. And they think Deshaun Nelson can be a key part of that. He just made that tip out of bounds defensively. First time we see him today. Transfer from Kilgore College on the Juco level. He can play the three and the four. Scores on all three levels. New faces in on both sides. Jumper from Jalen Andrews goes down. He's their leading scorer returning from a year ago. And they lost Cam Spencer, who's off to Rutgers. Andrew is one of the experienced vets who play a key role for Loyola. Jalen Terry finds Deshaun Nelson. It's Loyola group trying to match the physicality of DePaul. They're doing a nice job on this possession. Shot clock winding all the way down. Earl Penn trying to clean up the glass. Ultimately into the hands of Nelson. A second effort for DePaul turns into two points. I talked to Tavares Hardy before the game. I said, what are the keys to getting a victory here? He said, we can't turn the ball over. Well, they've already got three turnovers. And he said, we've got a rebound. we got to block out the old fundamental rebounding. But well, they just got hammered on the glass. So, so far, DePaul having their way with the smaller loyal team. You're right. One of his key points is limiting second chance opportunities. They get a second chance opportunity of their own here. Now a third opportunity. And they gave it away. We'll see. This is headed back to DePaul. Yeah, you got to find the bodies of DePaul. They're long. They're bouncy. It's all effort. Who wants it more? And those are the plays if you're going to pull an upset on the road. You have to shore up. You can't give the better team three, four, five shots at the basket. Gibson at the top of the key, drains a three. I'm already seeing how much of an impact he could have on this DePaul group. Again, coming over from Oklahoma, where he led the Sooners in scoring a season ago, was an all-Big 12 player. And he's introducing himself to Blue Demon fans in the opening half of this one. Freshman Alexander will have three free throws coming up. Our officiating crew, Earl Walton, Tim Claudery, Mike Malone tonight. You mentioned this Loyola group, Jess. When you're going up against a group that on paper is the favorite in DePaul, and I guess how do you overcome that with a young group? Because this is a young team, Ports of ours, Hardy. The number one thing is you just can't turn the ball over. Uh, if you're going to pull an upset against a team that's a lot better, three, four, five turnovers a half at the most. You have to compete on the glass, and you have to have somebody get hot. Somebody bank in a few threes, make shots they're not used to making, and have one of those nights. It happens in basketball where a guy gets really on fire and nobody can stop it. Kenneth Jones has the ability to knock in six or seven threes. He's a fifth-year senior. He's working on his NBA. Very high IQ guy. He's moved over to the wing with the emergence of Deion Perry. He's going to have a monster year, but he needs to have a monster night here in Chicago. You're right. That three-point shot got to be the equalizer sometimes. You're right. Kenneth Jones, definitely a player they're hoping they can step up offensively this season, especially tonight. There's a nice play from Chris Kuzmeca defensively on the Loyola side. It's Jalen Andrews on a break. Has a 6'10 urinate guarding him right now. Alexander cut off on the baseline. Freshman from the Bronx threw it away. Another turnover for Lirola. That's already the fifth of the game. So hard to simulate that length in practice. Yeah. Right? They look open, but these guys can get a finger on it. They're collapsing. Got to be very smart. Ball fake. Get the defense swinging, then make the pass. 
Javon Johnson leading to Paul in scoring. No. Deshaun no. Nelson, long three, didn't like that shot. No, there. that's not what they need right there out of him. They need him to get on the glass, take open shots, but that's basically a turnover, and those are the types of plays you can't win conference games with. In practice yesterday, Tony Stubblefield preached to Deshaun Nelson about strong finishing at the rim. That's what they want today. Back comes Gibson. Already off to a nice start. He's knocked down one three. Nelson pulls another. Couldn't hit that time, so two straight trips for DePaul without a made three. They had scored on the previous six possessions before that. Nelson was one of the top junior college players in the country last year. So many schools came after him, but it is a different style of basketball. It's a lot of quick shooting, running up and down. He's got to move it on, make the extra pass. It'll come back to him. Yorinay, one of the top shot blockers in the country, kind of a grimace up to the monitor there as he wanted to block. DePaul already three of six from deep. Loyola will shoot free throws when we come back. Second chance. Second chance. Oh, You're doing nothing for me, Nick. You're giving me nothing. Early nine-point lead for DePaul, nearly halfway through the opening half on opening night here in Chicago. Somewhat of a homecoming for Tavares Hardy, the head coach for Loyola, Maryland. That's his wife, Billy Hardy. They met at Northwestern just back at student orientation. <laughs> have been together ever since. Well, that's the Tavares I remember when I played against him. I was a six-year senior. I believe he was a freshman. So I was able to take advantage of him before he got in the weight room and turned into a Horace Grant. He was an all-Big Ten player. He yes. vividly remembered that his very first wow. conference game was against you. Uh, he claims that he got some raw calls from the officials against me, and he found out, or they would have won the game. So I don't. We, those are old VHS tapes. Nobody has those anymore, so he can't prove that. But we'll take his word for it. What a great guy. He told us yesterday that this is his dream job. I mean, he wants to be in an institution that values academics, character, basketball, he, he's one of the happiest coaches we've ever been around. He just loves this job. Claims that he does still have a bruise or two from you from about 20 years <laughs> ago. That might be the proof. Wait a that might be the proof. <laughs> Roll back the VHS film. He said this feel, this program, kind of has a similar feel to Northwestern. High academic institution, and he really preaches that, as you mentioned. Getting it done on and off the floor. Four years in a row with the first teamer yep. in the Patriot League. Great developer of talent. Coach to Georgetown and Georgia Tech. A lot of experience and just a pleasure to know him and learn from him. And he ran a great practice this morning trying to get his guys ready for this big time opponent in the ball. That's what they would like to do more of force turnovers. The ball had seven points off turnover through that first nearly 10 minutes of the opening half. And Zion Cruz checks in for. DePaul, one of their true freshmen, Trenton, New Jersey native, Javen Johnson checks out. 
Earl Penn comes back in for the Blue Demons. Some new faces all around being introduced to this Blue Demon fan base. Ahmad Bynum as well defending right now against Deion Perry. Also a guy who didn't play last year but was in practice every day. Jalen Andrews had second thoughts about that thanks to the defense from Zion Cruz. Now Bynum's floater. Bit short. Ane, a third effort. And he's been all over the glass in the early stages of this one. Couldn't finish chance for Loyola to pull within six. They're just three of ten from the field. They've had trouble with that right now. It's just not being able to sort things out in the half court without turning it over. Well, DePaul's defense has been so disciplined. They are staying in a stance. They're helping. They're communicating. They have to get stops so they can get out and do what they do best, and that's run with the basketball. The three-point shooting also has improved so far. Last year, only 31% from beyond the arc. They've got to get that up into the mid-30s if they're going to have a better year. But so far, so good at the defensive end. Just watch them. Just the way they're sliding their feet, closing out, forcing really tough shots like that. It's high energy, just like their practices. Second chance opportunity for the Greyhounds. Corner three. Bit strong, and then a foul called on Ane. That'll be his second already. That's one thing to watch in this matchup with both sides having injury issues at the forward spot is foul trouble, specifically with the bigs, and Ane will have to check out here. A good call, Jason. I mean, that's a big story early in this game. All of a sudden, now DePaul goes with their smaller lineup. Can DeForest Hardy get the ball inside and take advantage of the rim without the big shot blocker in there? Yep. Now the tallest player on the floor becomes the player with the ball in his hands right now. Golden DK at six foot ten. DK needs to touch it on the post on the next few possessions. Instead, it's a three from Andrews. That's a big one that goes down to make it a five-point game. Andrews took a career high in three-point attempts a season ago. Picking up where he left off. Andrews is such a good high post player. He can flash. He's athletic. But if he's knocking down that three, Earl has got a chance. Speaking of flashing, a flash to the rim there from Earl Penn, who averaged 17 a game last season at Long Island. There's that touch from DK that you wanted to see, and he turns it into two. Well, this isn't Coach Hardy's first rodeo. You know when the rim protector goes out, you've got to be smart and attack the rim and make them stop you. And they get a double dribble call. On Emoji Gibson, so rare mistake from the veteran. This DePaul program 44 and 8 in non conference games over the last four seasons. Again, seven new players on this team. We've seen practically all of them so far. A little over halfway through the opening half. Jalen Terry checks back in. He got the start tonight. Filman Gebruit, who you should see throughout the season for DePaul, is another player who's out, along with Nick Ogenda. A little weave action, probably into a high ball screen. Here it comes. Great call. Got to finish it. Pretty move, no dice at the rim for Deion Perry. DePaul with numbers trying to take advantage in the form of a three. Zion Cruz could knock it down. One, two, two. One, two, two. <laughs> I think I think this is going to be a one-man possession. DK doing it all himself. <laughs> Couldn't quite turn it into two. Loyola Maryland, a young group. They've stayed poised after a, a tough start rhythm-wise. Bynum got it. So a three to stem the tide for DePaul. And why was that shot open? Because dribble penetration collapsed the defense. Great pass to the corner. If you can break that first line defensively, you can get your teammates open. First college bucket for Ahmad Bynum. Well, here comes the dribble penetration. You get across the first line. Perry does not get out. He had to help. He couldn't recover. That's DePaul basketball. Great extra pass. DK also has two fouls. So you look at the, the two 6'10 players that are kind of key in this matchup, DK and your Nego with five fouls. All of a sudden, we kind of got a small ball game going on here, Gus. Yeah, didn't expect this. I mean, it's, it's a chess match now. You know, Coach Hardy 
I know he doesn't want to take him out with two fouls, but let's see if he brings him back in because this is the time of the game where they could take advantage of that size. Shake and bake from Bynum there. Didn't quite get a second straight jumper to go. Eight-point lead for the Blue Demons. Lonzo Faure, second chance opportunities earlier, couldn't finish. They have him rolling to the rim here. Instead, they try to go with the hook shot. For Marquise Redding couldn't finish. Second chance, no dice, and back come the Blue Demons again. Earl Penn transition three. All tipped around. Zion Cruz has been aggressive defensively. Got called for a foul there, though. No points in the last nearly three minutes for Loyola. It's an early eight-point edge for DePaul. in the Big East Tournament. Oh, count it! If he wins this one, it'll be a gem. What a game at the world's most famous arena. is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. A look at Navy Pier on a beautiful Monday night. Hopefully another good college, football, college basketball season commencing here. And you look at the preseason poll for the Big East. And DePaul picked to finish last year behind a Georgetown team that went 0-19 in the conference a season ago. Creighton up at the top. Kind of the shockwave that was sent through the conference in the off season was Jay Wright's decision to retire at Villanova. How uh, do they reset and reload with the new staff there? It'll be interesting. You know it's always going to be physical and it's going to be high quality play, but it's always interesting as a coaching staff and as a player when you're picked last. You know, the psychological warfare. I'm, I mean, with these veteran guys like Gibson and Johnson, I mean, they're not going to allow that to happen. Do you do you put that up on your mirror every day in your bathroom to remind yourself of what you're playing for? Does it become a self-fulfilling prophecy? Guys handle that different ways. But as a former player and coach, I would remind myself every day that we're picked to finish dead last. We're going to have to outwork everybody. So far in this game, they've come out and fought. They're going to be a handful, especially on this home court. That chip on the shoulder, a good thing, and you're seeing it right now. Case in point there. Greyhounds get it back, but Gibbs couldn't knock down the three. DePaul starters began 6 of 11 from the field, 2 of 10 since then. And go down low to Penn. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Byron looking for his second three. Battle for the board. DePaul fans wanted a call. They didn't get one. But Javen Johnson gets the rebound, turns it into two instead. He's got a little Paul George in his gal. Yeah, we got some blood. We're going to have to get a timeout here, Johnson. Yeah, that was the call they wanted. Was the, he got hit in the mouth, and now they'll stop the play. He was hit battling for the board, and there was no call. And 
still found a way to get the rebound. He is just so tough and so long. Now, this is an unguardable shot. A little fader to create space, and you look at the length. I, I'm telling you, he'll be in the league in the next couple years. Getting cleaned up there. They're going to take another look at that. Again, it was before the shot, at least what, it, what I saw, that battle for the rebound right there. Did he get hit again is the question mark. It's not enough to see right there. Nice crab dribble, so skilled. So he goes back to the locker room to get cleaned up. See who checks in for him in the meantime. Ken Johnson transferred from Iowa State last season after graduating from Iowa State. Enrolled at the fall in December. Well, there it is. Yeah. Locked up with Marquise Redding there. It's hard to tell whether it was on the lockup or did he sw on the down on swipe. On the down swipe, yeah. Lock the shot. They're going to look it over and let us know. But it's such a unique team, right? A lot of transfers, but so much experience and skill. One of the older teams in the country. I just don't see these guys finishing in last place, and I I don't think these new guys are going to let that happen. Average age on the team is 21 and a half. That's as we start looking at the transfer portal over the last couple of years. I guess that's becoming somewhat more common to have older teams now. And that's how you want to build. And yep. Coach Doublefield, known around the country, is one of the great recruiters in the country. No matter where he's been, I, I asked him, I said, how'd you get Mo Gibson to come here? And he said, look, I, I knew somebody who knew him, and that's how it worked out. So since they didn't have a whistle on the play and it's not a flagrant foul, they can't penalize anything there on that possession. That looked like Tavares put me in kind of a headlock back in the day, huh? I think he thinks it was the other way around. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> There's Tavares. Got to speak some Finnish with him earlier and over the weekend as well, right? He speaks Finnish. He played professionally in Finland. Another one of his traits and habits that he can go to. Vast skill set of Tavares already. I, I tuned out when you guys started talking at that level. <laughs> I was mental level stuff. I'm just, I'm just a farm kid. From oh, no. <laughs> Happy to be back with you, my man. College basketball is back. Early 10-point lead for DePaul. That's a Princeton offense where Loyola is trying to get that back cut, but it appears to be there, and yet DePaul closes it so quickly when the ball's in the air. They prepped on it in practice yesterday. Gibson wants this ball screen. Nice. Great point guard play. I think they drew one. They got an offensive foul called there on Deshaun Nelson. In the paint, a nice job from David Brown. Well, he got what he wanted. The roll, but that's just an elite play defensively to step in there and take the hit. Now Perry's got to get going here. The quickest player, the fastest player in the last 10 years at Loyola. According to Coach Hardy, the top point guard in Baltimore last year. They are so high on him. He's undersized, but he's got speed. But he's got to be able to get to the basket and at least collapse that defense and make something happen. He's without a bucket in 10 minutes. Led them in scoring in their exhibition game. Shot clock is at six for the Greyhounds. Nice speed down low. A foul called on Penn. And Alonzo Fowry will go to the line. Well, Jones feels the double team coming. He knows somebody has to be open, and I don't know how he got it in there. Coming right in your living room, a no-looker, snaps it, puts it right in his pocket. Brilliant pass. Really threaded the needle there. He led the Patriot League an assist last season. And that won't happen this year for one reason. They've moved him to the wing. He doesn't have to distribute this year. That's Perry's job. They need him 
to score. Now, you just saw right there his point guard skills. He's going to handle the ball as well, but they need big points out of him. They need him to get hot in this game, but he was great to talk to as well. NBA student, wants to coach someday, high IQ guy. He's going to be an all-conference level player this year. Yep. Ball team 15 and 16 a year ago. Trying to open up the non-conference slate on a high note. Nice lob off the fingertips, though, of the newcomer Earl Penn. Well, Penn can sky. I mean, he has a ton of bounce, but there have been four or five of those careless passes in this game. You can get away with those probably in this game, but you can't get away with it against Villanova. Seven turnovers tonight for DePaul, nine for Loyola, nearly a tenth. Now they do get away. Jalen Terry on the break to the rack, and he's able to get that to go, plus a foul. Well, again, turning defense into offense. You can see why Terry was one of the top point guards in the country coming out of high school, and he just takes on the whole defense. That's an athletic play. Hangs, soars, and nice touch at the rim. Terry, a Flint, Michigan native who began his career at Oregon. He was actually recruited by Tony Stubblefield to Oregon. Stubblefield was an assistant in Eugene and then followed Stubblefield from Eugene to Chicago. Get closer to home, too. He's from Flint, Michigan. We talk about Stubblefield. I mean, he just, he knows everybody yep. everywhere, right? He just, he, some guys are regional recruiters. He recruits the world. He just knows how to get the right guys for his system and loves having Terry around. Like you said the other day, they kind of like to spread you out a little bit. How do you feel they've done with that so far? They're pretty good. Um, they've shot the ball a little too quick, probably for coaches liking, but they want to be aggressive on the fast break. It's not the same offense as Oregon ran. They, they spread you out early and then they play a lot more one-on-one, -on -one. but he's just looking for quality shots. And again, last year they only shot 30% from three, so they've got to get that up in the mid-30s, and that'll give them five to six more wins just by doing that. They're four of ten from three tonight. That's been a key part of this lead. It's an 8-0 DePaul run over the last four minutes and change. No points, a little over five minutes for this Loyola team, and that changes. Off the first bucket from Deion Perry, a much-needed bucket from this freshman they're high on. Oh, well, uh, he... Senses the double team coming. Hard hedge. You got to stay low, young point guards, and try to split this. A little crossover. Here he comes right at you. There's the hedge. Goes right through the middle, coming into your living room. They got to get him going. He's too good. do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. 
a diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. do. Back in Chicago, DePaul on top of Loyola, Maryland. 3.50 to go in this opening half. The biggest preseason first team names. Any of these jump out to you here, Just? Well, Kulk Renner has just made a tremendous difference over in Omaha, protecting the rim. He gets better every time I see him. And Jack Nungy's going to have a monster year. I mean, faced a lot of tragedy in his life, transferred in there. He could have 25, 30-point nights regularly. It's New Year, same story, an elite conference with elite players. Nunji in action right now against Morgan State. You look around the conference, UConn, Villanova, Xavier, Butler, and St. John's all on top in their respective season openers. You can say the same about DePaul. 11-point lead, shade under four to go in this opening half from Wintrust Arena. In Chicago, South Loop. O.J. Gibson with four assists in this game. Tried to dump it down low to Deshaun Nelson. Fouled there by Redding. Jalen Terry has had a nice impact tonight. Philman Gebruit out of the lineup. Terry athletic Ooh. move at the rim and a pretty finish. Well, it just seems like he hangs up there a half a second longer than the defenders and is able to slither around him. Kenneth Jones able to answer from deep. Keep Loyola Maryland in this first half. That was a big shot to keep it a 10-point game. That was really good defense, but that was elite offense. Gibson loves the step back. Nearly turned it into three, but two comes off the tip from Earl Penn. I talked to Coach Stubblefield this afternoon, and you won't believe who he compared Penn to. He actually said sometimes he reminds me of Dennis Rodman. And you just saw it right there, the relentless pursuit of the basketball on the offensive end to get up on the glass and rip it down. Well, don't forget, our Jeep halftime report is coming up. The ball points off turnovers. We'll take a peek at that. That's played a key role in this opening half. And we examine the first half stats in our Jeep halftime report. You know, Tavares Hardy doesn't want to put DK back in because of the foul trouble, but Sometimes when you're on the road, you're playing against a power team like this. Sometimes you got to take some risk. And there's a piece of me that thinks putting back in right now for a couple minutes, and maybe you can close this gap. He's not probably going to do it, but maybe you roll the dice in a game like this. Oh, and and one opportunity coming up on an excellent finish from Deshaun Nelson at the rim. That's the strong finishing that they were looking for in practice yesterday, and it's paying off in the game tonight. Well, that's his game. A strong man around the rim, really explosive and powerful. Coach said today, look, if we can get him to practice hard every minute, every practice, he can make a big impact this year in conference play. And you just saw what he could do right there. Just a little bully ball powered through and got the and one. 18 points in the paint tonight for DePaul. Earl Penn nearly saved that. And give it to the Greyhounds. Like you said, that kind of chip on the shoulder mentality that this DePaul team will need all season long. Pick to finish last in the Big East. It's showcasing early in this one. They certainly feel they can prove some people wrong and have the roster and transfers to do it. And that's the back cut that Loyola Maryland loves to execute. First time we've really seen them do it cleanly on the finishing end is Chris Kuzmecca. That's the Princeton offense. They lull you to sleep, you overplay a little bit, and they get you back to work. Again, Deshaun Nelson on the glass trying to clean things up. Could it? Here's the speed of the 5'8", Deion Perry. His debut. And it's 
Jones skying to the rack. And able to make it a 10 point game with about 90 seconds to go in this opening half. And, and up, on the deck here is Fowre. Right? That Princeton offense you know, lulls you to sleep. Good spacing, you move the ball around, and if you overplay, they'll cut back door hard on you. Appears to be favoring his hand. I tell you what, they cannot afford any more entries on the front line. Already without Milos Ilic, who would be a starting forward for them. He's a six foot ten player, and his brother Belko Ilic, also six foot ten, is out right now too. You see the overplay. It takes a good bounce pass. Bynum gets caught in no man's land, and that is just beautiful basketball. And that's how you execute it. Just Greyhounds team. They, they know how to run their offense. Is Bynum the finish? But the finish is the hair from Nelson. Greyhounds with 13 returners this year. Had just one transfer in the offseason, Cam Spencer. It was a big transfer, but a lot of players returning. Know this offense well. Javen Johnson tried to sneak a feed to Gibson, picked off, and back comes Kenneth Jones. He says it swatted from behind by Nelson. So Nelson getting it done on both ends of the floor tonight. Under a minute to go in this opening half. The three. Around and out from Jalen Andrews. In the hands of Javen Johnson, and he says, let's let it breathe a little bit here. <laughs> hey, what about Nelson? Right, is he making an impact on this game? Told us he was a two-way player. It'll stick with DePaul. Well, the reason DePaul doesn't want to turn it over, they want to at least get misses. So he can come along and clean up the mess, and Jones thinks he's got a pretty good look at the rim, point blank, and beautifully timed. It doesn't get any better than that. He put together his own personal highlight reel right here in the first half of the opening game. And his first game in a Blue Demon uniform. Transfer from Kilgore College. And you got to take that shot, Jason. And Johnson knocks it down. You really like his game, and we're seeing why tonight. Shot clock is off here for the Greyhounds. They call the timeout. Johnson just lets it come to him. He's a star. He knows he's a star. Coach Doublefield knows he's a star, but the rest of the country doesn't know much about him. But he's on prime time tonight. And they're going to find out real soon that you've got to get a hand up. He can do it inside, outside, faders, floaters, flippers, face you up, 3 and D. And he's a big-time prospect. Largest DePaul lead of the night. It's up to 15 dwindling seconds of this opening half. Ball team wants to be able to score a lot of points this season in a Big East that is physical. You can see teams at times scoring 60, 70 points, low 60s, but DePaul is in their offense and they're running it correctly. They could score some points this year, getting it done inside and out tonight. Well, these late game scenarios here, these are great situations to practice. If you're DePaul, you want to make sure that Kenneth Jones does not touch the ball here. Disrupt this play if you're Mo Gibson. Make somebody else take a tough shot at the buzzer. Dennis Jones leading all Loyola scores. They go to him, fading away, and he got it to go at the horn. So Kenneth Jones puts himself in double figures. They'll need more from him in the second half. Well, everybody in the arena knew who they wanted to go to. The DePaul coaches said, don't let Jones touch it. We knew it. You still couldn't stop him. Big time play by the fifth year senior to quiet the crowd and catch a little momentum going into halftime. Nonetheless, still a 13 point DePaul lead. More coming up from Wintrust when we return for halftime. Brought to you by Jeep.
Welcome to the Jeep Halftime Report, sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Well, here's a look at the Jeep highlights, sponsored by Jeep. That first half, Jesse, was really highlighted by the points off turnovers. Well, DePaul's been very connected defensively, jumping passing lanes, trusting in one another. That's led to runouts and easy baskets like that one at the other end. 12-2 to points off of turnovers in this game. That's been the big difference. And look at the hustle, the extra pass. The athletic plays at the rim. Loyola's well, got to shore up those turnovers, but give a ton of credit to this DePaul defense. They've been ruthless out there. We'll have more coming up from Chicago. 13-point lead for DePaul at the break on opening night in the Windy City.
College Hoops is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Look at beautiful Chicago on a Monday night. Our first half stats are sponsored by Jeep. We take a peek at the first half here. Just anything jump out to you? Well, the 11 loyal turnovers really jump off the page, but DePaul has punished them severely for it. Not just taking the ball, but getting out and running and dunking and getting 12 fast break points. Well, when you look at DePaul, one of our primary stool lines entering tonight, they're forward Nick Ogenda, who's going to be a key piece for this team at some point this season. Not in the lineup tonight, but they've kind of gotten it done by committee in the front court. Now, Penn, Nelson, Ane, 15 points, 10 big rebounds combined. That's getting it done. They've been dominant on the glass. Look for DePaul to continue to go inside, work inside out. It's been a great formula. And then defensively for DePaul, you mentioned they've kind of collapsed well on this Loyola team that likes to go with those back cuts, but really just haven't gotten it done consistently so far. And don't forget, all eight Big East games tonight will be showcased on Big East opening night tip-off on FS1 here with each individual game streamed in their entirety on the Fox Sports app. So it's a busy night of Big East hoops. It's back. We're here with you at Wintrust Arena. Just settles Jason Ross Jr., our awesome Fox Sports crew on hand tonight. There's Javen Johnson. He's been a key piece for DePaul. Tavares Hardy, the Chicago area native, back in his home state. He's got plenty of friends and family in the building. You see Loyola, Maryland out of the Patriot League in their 112th season of men's basketball. They're hoping to make some noise in the Patriot League. Again, it's a it's a young team that's trying to get a rhythm right now. Dion Perry, a freshman they're very high on, who led the team in scoring in their exhibition game, only with a couple of points tonight on one made field goal and four shot attempts. So we'll see if he can get rolling. He's on the floor to begin this one, number 12 in black. Kenneth Jones, their only player in double figures in that opening half, will do the inbounding duties. A little baptism by fire for Perry. That's true. Young in his career on the road against a team like DePaul. I like the high ball screen action for him. They're going to have to send more screeners and get him a little space so he can attack the rim. We thought the forward matchups would play more of a role in that opening half, but Golden DK and Yorinay are both in foul trouble. Now they're both on the floor matched up against one another. Here is that matchup. Kenneth Jones with 10 tonight. Lops to kick it out late. Turns into a three. Well, you can see why Kenneth Jones could have transferred and played up a level. Guys wanted him. You can see why. The passing, the shooting. He wanted to stay there and finish the job. He said, these guys are like family to me. I wanted to compete for this team, be able to come back, not burn any bridges. Well, he is going to have a monster year. David Brown knocked down the three off the pass from Jones. Jalen Terry was excellent in the opening half. That's tapped out. We get a tie up. Well, Jones just has a feel for the game. The great players think a step ahead. Doesn't force a bad shot. Look, the defense collapses. He knows strong side is open. Perfect pass. Elite assist man can play three guard positions. Just loves wearing this uniform. His other playmaker, Jalen Andrews, nearly forced a turnover there. He does. Ball is available. Ultimately scooped up, though, by Javen Johnson. Second chance for DePaul. Turns into two points. DePaul shooting just under 40% in this game. DK finds himself wide open. Strong on the triple try. Jones made a basketball play there. Sometimes you got to be a little selfish in games like this. He's got to shoot that one.
might need more offense out of your Renee in the early stages of this season for DePaul without Nick Ogenda in the lineup. Renee will play some heavy minutes. Nice cut. However, the strip defensively from Emoji Gibson did well to read that. Uh, Loyola had numbers on the fast break there, but that's typically not how they play. They set it up. Uh, you don't get a better look than that, but that length and quickness of DePaul just disrupting those plays late, even when the ball seems like it's going to make it through. Yeah, you don't much expect much pace out of the Princeton offense, right? There's no question. I mean, they want to play slow. They want to play efficient. DePaul wants to speed them up. So far in this game, advantage DePaul. Andrews tightly guarded at the horn. Rebound in the hands of Jalen Terry. Little pen at nine in that opening half. Gibson at four assists. He's looking for another one here. And gets it off the triple from Javen Johnson. Now coaches talk about players having the it factor. You, you can't describe it. Gibson and Johnson both have the it factor. Right. They just know where each other they're going to be. They haven't played many games together, but that's just thinking a play or two ahead, and those two are not finishing last in this league, Jason. You, you mark my word. That's my first bold prediction of the year. DePaul is not going to finish last if those two stay healthy. Steal the backcourt from Perry. I like your bold predictions on day one of the season, <laughs> Just Get them all season long. 43-30 to the DePaul lead, a group that's again picked to finish last in the conference, but it's the effort plays. They're going to help them get it done. Tony Stubblefield, the head man, watching his team move on through this second half. We'll step aside here in Chicago. Welcome back to College Hoops on Fox 43-30 lead for DePaul, a team that lost the leading score, Javon Freeman Liberty, but insert Javon Johnson. He's got 17 tonight. They move so well without the basketball. His spacing is outstanding. He can pull up on the fast break. He's already got 17 points from all over the court. And it's only taken him eight shots. That's what's been so impressive. Six rebounds, constantly squaring up his feet, perfect rotation. He's going to be a star in this league, and like we said before, Coach Doublefield's been trying to tell everybody that. Maybe tonight, everybody watching will start listening. Been so efficient, too. Seven of eight from the field. Yeah. Three of four from deep. Really a three-level score has gotten it all done tonight. Had some blood earlier, too, that he fought through. Jalen Terry, a step back three. By the way, at practice yesterday, I kind of got the feel that David Johnson, somewhat of a, a silent leader, and players tend to follow him by example. 
Your and they defending here. Kept his arms straight up, but good offense from Golden Decan. Wow. Showed us that move in the first half with the right hand, I believe. And then comes back with the left hand. So they've got to keep feeding the big fella. Put some pressure on that round. Were you ambidextrous <laughs> back in the day? The scouting report on me was uh, make him go left. Is that what Tavares Hardy read when he <laughs> tried to defend you? That's right. In his, hey. first ever, well, his first ever conference game against you in the Big Ten. Northwestern versus Iowa. Look, he, was, he turned into an elite shot blocker. When I played him, he was just a youngster. You could get him off his feet. You know, he'd bite for a pump fake. He'd get him in foul trouble. I was gone by the time he turned into Horace Grant was protecting the rim. But yeah, left hand, right hand, you can tell. DK's been working on his game this summer. Here's Tavares Hardy. Again, played at Northwestern if you're just tuning in. Two-time All-Big Ten selection. Former assistant coach at Northwestern as well. Now is his dream head coaching job. Earl Penn gets the free throw to go. Gets the lead back up to 12. Largest lead is 15 for DePaul. He's back to tightly defended here by KT Ramey, who we're seeing for the first time on the Blue Demon side. you got to watch the backdoor cut when you're overplaying the lanes like this. He tried to go over it a couple times. Kuzmeca's three is down. Makes it a single-digit game. That's pretty good defense by DePaul. Took away the backdoor cuts. Forced the ball to be kicked out. Sometimes you got to tip your hat to a good three-point shooter. Chris Kuzmeca drains the triple, gets the Greyhounds within nine. Still very early stages, second half. Going at it in the Big East tournament. Oh, count it! If he wins this one, it'll be a gem. What a game at the world's most famous arena. Look at Corin Adams in the midst of that Loyola Maryland huddle. All-time leading scorer in Morgan State women's basketball history. Sixth woman to serve as an assistant coach in Division I history and currently the only woman in that position. In her third year, excellent coach has such an incredible passion for the game dating back to her playing days. Awesome to see on that Loyola Maryland bench. She was in charge of the out-of-bounds defensive plays today. So the ball likes to get the ball in bounds and run a lot of flex cuts along the baseline. So her strategy was, unless you really get separated, we're not going to switch that. Um, that's That was her point of emphasis today. So far, so good. I can only recollect one flex cut where Paul's been able to get an easy basket. So assistant coaches obviously play such a huge role in scouting and prepping these games. And there's a wide-open out-of-bounds play right there. She didn't like the defense on that one. No. 
the Gibson was pretty open. Willow Maryland got away with them. Last time score was within 10 points, was 22 to 14 back in the opening half with the ball up, but Greyhounds have scratched their way back within nine and plenty of time to go in this game. And the reason the Greyhounds have scratched their way back into this game is the no turnovers. You come out in the first half, the first four, five minutes, and you don't turn the ball over, and good things happen when you don't give the ball to DePaul so they can run out and dunk on you. Total flip of the script from their seven turnovers in the early stages of the opening half. DK has stayed on the floor, and he's been good in the second half as well. Ten in black. And we get a foul called there on DePaul. And this is a tough game for Anders, a little bit undersized against a Big East team playing the small forward. Not in his own conference, but he has kept his poise against that length. You can't fall asleep on him if you're DePaul. He can score number two for Loyola. Here's that high ball screen, and Perry's got to take advantage of it. Perry with four points tonight. Jalen Andrews with four on the shot clock. Able to hoist it over Johnson. Ultimately, though, it's Johnson emerging into the front court for the Blue Demons. That's a fun matchup. Javen Johnson against Jalen Andrews. KT or Amy working on Kuzmeka. Corner three for Johnson. Bit strong, followed his own miss. Turned into Yorinay corralling it. Ball is still loose on the deck. Look at the effort from Johnson. Gives DePaul a second possession and a second try to three goes down. Emoji Gibson drills it. That is a huge possession in this game. Mark that one down. Loyola with an opportunity to get back in this game and really close the gap. Loose ball. DePaul comes up with it and Gibson. He is so smooth. Little shot fake. That's anybody's ball. Everybody getting down on the floor for it. What a pass. Look at the shot fake. Beautiful. Boy, he comes out before these games, has all those basketball camp fundamental drill. Look at that. Those drills that he does, the ball handling drills, the shots. This kid's been in the gym already for about three hours today working. It's There's really no secret to his success. Just work harder than everybody else, and you'll get rewarded with plays like that. Second three of the day for Gibson is the first DePaul field goal in a little over three minutes. That's a big one for them. Gibson transfer from Oklahoma. Nice inbounds play from the Greyhounds. And Kuzmeka finishes. Anytime you can score on those types of plays, you can win those baseline out-of-bounds plays. you got a chance to win. But Gibson made a mistake right there. When you're guarding the ball as a defensive player, Jason, you cannot allow the ball to get thrown back under the rim like that. You have to force the pass to the sideline. Gibson now calling for a screen. Gibson into the paint, able to finish. Now he knows he made a mistake, and he wanted to get it back. What a play. That's what you love out of a 60-year player. Right, isn't it? right. He just, uh, he was a little bitter about his defense on that last one, and he plays with so much poise and confidence. Nice pass there, and a corner three off the mark, though, from Isaiah Alexander. Second chance for the Greyhounds. We'll reset it. Redding gets called for a travel. And if you're guarding the ball in these inbounds plays, if you're on the ball, you've got to protect the rim at all costs. Force the ball to the baseline. That's too easy of a straight line pass. He knows it. He gets upset about it. He says, Coach, I'm not going to pass this one. I got the switch on the big. Man. Kisses it off the glass. He fits in well here at DePaul. DePaul play Western Illinois on Friday night. That game will be on FS2. And they have a tough Big Ten test on Monday against Minnesota. That's in Minneapolis. This Loyola Maryland team also playing a Big Ten team this week. They have Penn State on Thursday. Loyola Maryland's schedule tough over the last couple of years. They opened up last season against North Carolina, a team that eventually went on to play in the national championship, losing to Kansas, one of the favorites to win the title this season, and played them tough. Lost 83-67, to but... Never really felt out of hand. Well, they're really a good matchup for a lot of these Power 5 schools because they try to slow you down, they frustrate you, they run great back cuts, and you've really got to come to, with a game plan to compete with them. Deshaun Andrews had a good first half. That ball takes a couple of hops. Kuzmeca has been a good imprint for this Greyhound team in the open in the second half here. 
It's nearly halfway through the second half of play. We well, talked about Loyola's schedule. They've got Penn State coming up on Thursday, then Brown. See Clemson in there as well. Get some tough non-conference action for Tavares Hardy's team to gear up for Patriot League play. And then it's great competition for his team. His kids love to play in these big-time environments. It earns a lot of money for the athletic department, and he has such respect around the country that he can pick up the phone and call about anybody and say, hey, we need to play you, and they say, hey, we're working out. That's how much guys respect him as a coach. And he told us they were recruit players who want to be in these matchups. Yeah, these, they, the kids love these games. Come to the big city, play on national television, and get to show your stuff. Reading a slew of moves. Kuzmeca's three strong. I hit one earlier. That would have been big if he knocked it down. Instead, back comes Gibson. And a foul called. Loyola, Maryland trying to make a push when we come back. DePaul up 12. They're hoping it stays that way. More from opening night here to win trust when we return. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Marks the 15th consecutive season. The Blue Demons have opened up their season at home. 14-1 record in that span. Here's a look at the upcoming schedule for DePaul and the non-conference. Western Illinois on Friday. Played the Leathernecks last season. And then at Minnesota on Monday. See Texas A&M around that Thanksgiving range. That one's here in Chicago. Mm, tough schedule especially yeah. with all the new faces. And Coach Doublefield said he's so much more comfortable this year, especially heading into conference play, just getting to know the arenas, the styles of play, the opponent. And coming out of the Pac-12, he said, you know, they just play so much faster, it seems like, every night. And teams like Providence and Villanova, he said, they, they'll grind you down. So they'll, they'll play in the 50s. They'll make you guard. They'll play bully ball. And he's just had to adjust to that a little bit. They, he wants to play fast. He wants to hang 100, but... The Big East doesn't let you do that most nights. You think they have the players in this roster to adjust to that physical style at times? I, I think time will tell. They've got to get healthy on their front court. Nick Ogenda out. He yeah. certainly would have been a starter tonight. We'll get him back right now. Deshaun Nelson's helping to fill the void there. He's certainly off to a nice start. In a DePaul uniform, transferred in the offseason. Six points tonight, 11 minutes of action off the bench. A 
feels like Loyola needs to make a push now. One of their patented cuts to the rim. An excellent second effort defensively from DePaul. And Javen Johnson is fouled by Deion Perry. Yeah, just a great Princeton cut. Wonderful shot fake. And those are the ones that kill you when you're in the film room tomorrow watching tape. Those are the ones, those high percentage shots on the road that have to go down. You pick up a cheap foul at the other end and the momentum swings in one play. Bynum found himself with space for three. That may have been partially deflected by Andrews. Now it's a three on two for Loyola. He'll take the three. Perry knocks it down. Big triple for the Greyhounds. Those two are just so interchangeable. Jones back playing point guard on the break. Perry knows, don't go get it from him. Just fill a lane and spot up and he'll find you. That is brilliant fast break basketball by a fifth year senior and a guy who was playing in high school right. last year at this time. You gotta love it. Experience to youth. Jalen Terry tries to answer with a three. Second chance opportunity for DePaul. Oh, nifty footwork in the lane there from Deshaun Nelson. And he gets space. He knows what to do with it. It's Loyola team 6 to 14 from downtown. That's where their most previous points came from. Trailing by 13 again, though, after they couldn't secure the rebound. A nice cut. And a confrontation at the rim between Nelson and DK. DK is going to the free throw line. And just an interesting chess match between the two coaches. A nay on the bench. Coach Stubblefield wants to go small ball and you get the advantage at the offensive end with Nelson, but at this end, you got to stop the big fella. So kind of pick your poison. Guys, coaches making moves, trying to go with different lineups, but DePaul can play small and they can play big. That felt like a Big East foul. Don't give them easy two. And, you know, DK really struggles at the free throw line. Went just 12 of 40 at the line last season. Yeah, and there are teams in the Patriot League who play the hack-a-check against yeah. him. You know, so it's tough to have him on the floor, especially late second half. That's, that stroke looked pretty good right there, though. Gets an important one of two. Keep it a 12-point game. Still within striking distance. Bynum tossed it away on the entry feed there. Looking for Nelson. Instead, back comes Kenneth Jones, dumping it down low to DK. Running on the baseline, wall round. Ultimately, they get the finish on a helter-skelter possession. Behind the back, slithers in. I mean, he's exhausted, but he still feels like they got a chance to win this game with all the turnovers, the size, the length, what they're going up against. It's a 10-point game, folks. That's right where they need to be. Little loose ball scramble, whoop. Behind the back, left hand. <laughs> what a player. We see you. Just all instinct, passion. Uh, he's been through the wars before. Kenneth Jones, a New Jersey native, a grad student. An average career highs and points per game and assist last season. See his ability to get it done on the inside there. Also enters the season, ranks ninth in school history and three-pointers made. They're moving him to the two, looking for more scoring. And on the big picture this season, when you look around the country, a lot of teams in action tonight, including that top-ranked North Carolina team. Creighton picked to win the Big East. They're highlighted there. Ninth in the top ten right now. Very early, so tough to gauge preseason rankings. These will certainly flip around quite a bit Coach early on here. Coach McDermott's best team probably since his son Doug played for him. Maybe they're loaded. They can score on anybody. The defense has improved, and I think anything less than a Sweet 16 or Elite 8 would be a disappointment for yeah. them. They're that good. Lost in the round of 32 to Kansas last season. Kansas, obviously, the eventual national champ so hard to pick a preseason top 10 anymore when the lineups are so different Jason yeah all right you got to go about five games in to see who really has the stuff but you mentioned Doug McDermott there he was a Chicago Bullet at one point after that excellent career at Creighton Gibson nice bounce pass down low to Deshaun Nelson he had it stripped away excellent defense from DK 
Now Kenneth Jones. Critical possession in this game to cut it to eight, maybe seven. Nice pass from Jones to DK. And DK on a second effort couldn't finish, yep. but Jones does. That's a big play. Mark that one down. I mean, Jones, we bragged about him the whole night, but we weren't lying. He is a big-time All-American level player. Built for this moment. Got beat on the switch right there, but they got away with it. He's playing with a lot of heart right now. You mentioned a lot of minutes for him, 25 on the night. Jalen Andrews, the only Greyhound who's played more. It's an 8-2 Loyola run. See if DePaul wants to get more size back in this game. But the small ball worked for a little while there, but they've got to get some rim protectors and some rebounders in. Jalen Andrews makes it a six-point game. Does their ball movement, constant movement, kind of tire you out defensively, too, at a stage like this in the game? It really does. I mean, they use that clock. They make the extra pass, and they just force you to fall asleep. And now, Tavares Hardy, excited like when he was playing for Northwestern. There's new life in the gym. Loyola's back in it. For the underdog Greyhounds, they're pulled within two possessions on a 7-0 run. Well, we said Kenneth Jones was going to have to be a star in this game, and he sure is not disappointed. Those are deep Stephen Curry type of shots. There's the one right before the half that gave Loyola all the momentum. Great players know how to steal momentum. He comes up with a 50-50 ball. It was such a crafty play, and there's just a little Joe Dumars going to jump off the ground, spot-up shot. He sat right next to me this afternoon at shoot around and said, look, my, my role has to increase this year at the scoring end of the court. Yes, I'm a distributor, but I've got to make big shots. And this is one of the best games of his career on FS1, on the road, against the Big East school. And he's going to play a major factor down the stretch if Loyola is going to steal. Yes, 14 points in 25 minutes. Drives to the rack here. Tried to flip it behind his back. Andrews has to save it with five on the shot clock. Jalen Andrews over your day. Ball pinballing around. Now back come the Blue Demons. Great job by the ball. That's a good first half defense. Let's see if they can turn that into a score at the other end. Smart play to go right inside and attack. Great basketball play by the ball. Your sixth point of the night. A couple of big ones there to put the ball back up eight. 
Big difference for Loyola in the second half, just one turnover. They had 11 in the opening half. Coaches just harp on that over and over. You have to protect the ball. You have to at least get a shot up there. Good things happen when the ball gets on the rim, but you let the ball get out and run, it's a recipe for disaster. And it's Jones in the drive. Your and they came over to sweep it away. Now it's 6'10", he'll take it up the court himself. And it's Jones late getting back in the play. Gibson tried to take advantage. Second chance to reset and recalculate for the transfer from Oklahoma. Kicks it out as an open Johnson. He does drain the three, and it's back to a double-digit game. A great sequence by Ane. Defense, offense, great screen there. He rolled hard and took two defenders with him. That enabled the backside to collapse. Johnson to get the open look. And as he's done all night, if he gets an open look, it's nothing but bottoms. Leading all scorers with 20 points. 20 big ones for Javen Johnson. Uh, Coach Stubblefield said, hey, look, uh, we're going to slow down with some small ball. Let's get the big back in the game. Momentum changing decision. Defense, running the floor, setting the screen, rolling hard. And seems like everything's opened up since he's come back into the game. Johnson, one point shy of tying your career high. A little three-quarter court pressure here by the Blue Demons. Loyola, usually pretty patient with this. They don't want to score against it. They want to break it and go right into offense, but it's a little token pressure, a little fake pressure there. Right now, it's kind of not panic time for this young Loyola Maryland team. Whose Mecca goes down off the screen. Still plenty of time on the shot clock for the true freshman point guard, Deion Perry. Perry underneath the screen. That three a bit short. Earl Penn the rebound. Now you can't say enough about Anae's defense. I mean, it is so difficult for a big man to guard that ball screen against a player with elite quickness. He stayed in his stance and closed on that shot. Perry did not even get a look at the rim. Anae enters this season ranked in the top 15 among active Division I players in shot blocks. When he hits his shot blocking partner, Nico again the back, it's going to be pretty scary in the paint. Another reason why this DePaul team could be better than most people expect them to be. A little under six to go in this final half of regulation. Just watch Ine away from the ball here at DePaul fan. Look how he disrupts the entire offense with his length. Came over again, right on cue, and swatted that into the front row. Your Ane has said, I've had enough. You're not going to come into our house and play well against us. Not much hospitality there by the big fella. Get that shot out of here. It's been tougher to get those back cuts that Loyola loves when he's on the floor. Great call, partner. It's changed the entire dynamic of the game. Nothing easy at the rim. He has been a force, and the way he's been able to step out on these ball screens and keep a hand up, so impressive. Look at the timing. <laughs> wow. Hey, a few words for the little guard. Stay out of here. Welcome to college basketball. Right. I like that better. It's good to be with you, partner. It's good to be with you, my man. You're all over the country. You got football. You got hockey, basketball. Last year when we called a game together, we were in a closet. That's true. Now we're back in business. My favorite place of all those you just mentioned is right here with you. Hey, you're going to be one of the best. So don't forget about us. Oh, thank you're you, my man. You're in the Final Four someday, buddy. Well, it's been a fun one tonight. Loyola, yeah. Maryland, and DePaul, their first ever matchup. Substitutions on both sides. Zion Cruz checks in for DePaul. Marquise Redding and Isaiah Alexander in for Loyola, Maryland. There's Tony Stubblefield in his second season at the helm for DePaul. Great guy off the court. Trying to build this DePaul program on the court. Big missed free throw, but what do we get here on the call? You know, that was interesting. And they... 
makes a hard block out, but it looked like he could have grabbed the ball, but he just kept rooting out the defender. Little, yeah, that push out. Yeah. That's right. It's interesting. And it, size came to his detriment there as he got a little excessive on the block out. Redding missed last year. He was injured, a former walk-on. He was very explosive, had some knee issues, but they need him to have a big year. And you just saw right there, he hustles. He's going to work every minute he's on the court. It's the Paul crowd letting him hear it on the free throw attempt. And it remains a 10-point game. And he is playing with four fouls. We'll keep him in at this point of the game. How much of an impact he's had. Flashing to the rim there. Instead, Gibson drive at Jones. Javon Johnson with 20 points tonight. A step back off the mark. He was looking for a new career high in points. Had that gone down. Willa Maryland needs a push. Jones trying to give it to him. Three a bit strong. Be a little too early to eat up clock here if you're DePaul. Let's see if Ane can get a touch. I mean, he's worked so hard defensively. Don't you reward him, Jason, at this end? I would love to see that. Now Zion Cruz instead fades. Again, pushing the pace isn't really Loyola Maryland's thing. They want to slow you down in the half court and get these back cuts going. Works to their detriment there. Tipped away. Two on one. Jayla Terry adjustment at the rim. Kuzmeka got back. He was hit in the face, and he's still down on the baseline. Meanwhile, Jones trying to attack, but Loyola Maryland's four on five, and they have to stop play. It's Chris Kuzmeka who pops up. Anytime there's any type of play, accidental or not, at the, with the head involved, yeah. oh. they're going to go over and look it over. Offensively there is what you're looking at on the elbow. Obviously inadvertently here from Jalen Terry, but they will look it over, just trying to adjust at the rim, and Kuzmeka caught the worst of it. Terry is so good at that, isn't he? Just floating and using the rim to kind of as a shield. And he's pretty good at finishing that. Boy, that... I don't, I don't, a few blots of blood, a little bit of drops of blood flowing tonight. Big Ooh. Again, Mo Gibson here. You've got to know where Jones is at all times. When he gives it up, you do everything in your power not to let him get it back. Make the freshman carry beat you. Make guys who aren't used to this big moment beat you. But Jones can take over this game and break your heart in the last four minutes. So Kuzemka sits down. Jalen Andrews looking for it on the cut. They didn't find him. Instead, a turnover on this possession, something that Willem Maryland had avoided for the vast majority of this half. Gibson trying to turn it into three, couldn't. Golden DK the rebound. It's been a bit of an offensive hold for the Greyhounds of late due to plays like that. Javon Johnson turns a block into a jam. Points off turnovers were so key for the ball in that opening half. 12 to 2 in that category. And that's what jump started this lead, but they don't want to surrender. Ever since that turnover when Loyola Maryland pulled within eight. DePaul has switched things around based on their defense. Nelson. Two more for the Blue Demons, and it's a 14-point game. The Blue Demons, boy, they responded. Now, some teams react. 
you panic a little bit. You're supposed to win this game. Things get tight. You force tough shots. But Ane just turned the momentum, the dynamic, and the defensive end, and then the guys offensively have made the extra pass and made the open shot. Plays just like that. Some words exchanged after that sequence. As Deshaun Nelson hit the deck. Well, Javon Johnson, 22 points tonight. The latest come in the form of this two-handed dunk. Two forty-eight lead for DePaul. New career high in points tonight for Javon Johnson. Yeah, we saw the preseason teams come out nationally and in the conference. He wasn't happy that he wasn't at the top of the list, so he decided to come out tonight on FS1 and prove to everybody early that he's going to be a threat all year. Such a smooth shot. That really defined his night right there. Gets the hand up, blocks the three at one end, gets the run out at the other, totally under control, very unselfish and workmanlike game. Only 13 shot attempts. Gets 22 points, four big threes, and does the dirty work on the glass as well. So impressed with his game. He's going to play at the next level. Those 10 rebounds are also one shy of a career high. And 22 points today. I talked to Paris Perham before the game, the assistant coach for DePaul, and he just said he, he's the perfect player for the next level, the way he's built, the way he can guard, the way he can run, his length. Right. He's exactly right. Shot clock winding down and time winding down. This Loyola Maryland team and their comeback efforts, but Deion Perry says we're not quite done yet. Eight under two to go. DePaul 44 and eight in non-conference play over the last four seasons. They've won four straight home openers. Tony Stubblefield in his second season. Got off to a nine and one start last year. They'd love to replicate that this season, but it is a tough non-conference schedule on the horizon for DePaul that continues with the Western Illinois Leathernecks on Friday. I think he's going to sleep better at night this year since Mo Gibson's in the lineup. He just has a calming effect on everybody. He can play well down the stretch. He's a good distributor. And as much success as they had at times last year, there were times they got too reckless. I don't think Mo Gibson's going to allow that to happen. You get down 12, 14 points in conference play. He's the type of guy that can keep you in games, especially on the road. Kenneth Jones, his three goes down all net, so all of a sudden, it's an eight-point game, 80 seconds to go. We've seen crazier things, but you're right, Emoji Gibson has kind of created a poised, controlled offense tonight for DePaul, especially in the helter-skelter moments. 
Javon Johnson has been the mainstay on the offensive end with 22 tonight. Draws a foul there. Well, Paris put in the scout today for DePaul defensively, and he said to the guys, he said, look, we're going to have to have a great defensive effort. Now, there's Jones. I mean, you talk about an effort. I mean, he's hit big shot after big shot. But he said, the way Loyola plays, they're going to get some backdoor cuts on you. Now, that Princeton offense is tough to guard. Just keep poised. Don't put your head down. And this is this is a dream job for Paris as well. He just grew up down the road on 35th Street in the same neighborhood as Richard Griffith, who's a Chicago King legend around here. He went to school at Dunbar. That's a 29th and King. And then here we are at DePaul on 22nd. So he's just a Chicago guy, worked at Illinois State, Illinois, Milwaukee's back at DePaul. He's brought in some really good transfers. And they're going to be a threat. And I do like the poise they play with. This game's not over. Seven new phases for DePaul this year. Jordan A's back in the game, by the way. He's been such a key part of this game. Turning around defensively, it's a rejection there, but that won't count with a foul called here. Do you fear when Jordan A isn't on the floor, though, for this DePaul team, based on what we've seen today, how much of an impact he's going to need to have defensively? Yeah, he's shown us a lot. I mean, the game is totally different when he is in the game, and he has played so hard in this one. And every big man now knows the game is all pick and roll. But the game is high ball screen, and that puts so much pressure on your defense, especially your bigs. But I didn't think he had this type of lateral quickness to come out and guard guards like that, even for a few seconds. That's been what's the most impressive. But yeah, he's a great shot blocker. He can rebound. But he's played hard and smart on the perimeter, which totally changed the momentum for DePaul as Loyola was climbing back in it. Prior to those free throws, Loyola Maryland was just 4 of 12 from the line, which is something they might kind of cringe at when they look back at this game. They're only down 7 here, but they missed 8 free throws. 4 of 12 from the line. Prior to that, wow. now 6 of 14. Well, that hurts. Yeah, it, yeah, that hurts when you look at a 7-point game here. Go fall, Cat two. Go fall, Cat two and three. Well, DePaul hasn't scored in the last two minutes and 40 seconds here. And Mo Gibson shoots close to 85% from the free throw line. So they want him to handle right here. And Terry's got to be smart with the ball as well. But if you're Perry, don't let Mo get it here if you can help it. Is this a quick foul for you here on the Loyola side? It's got to be. If you're DePaul, just staying clean with the ball is they're at the scores table, sorting something out here. We have a clock issue in the arena. We got one timeout if we need it. If you got to fall out of bounds, call timeout. They get it in bounds to Javon Johnson, double him in the corner. There's Emoji Gibson, who you said they needed to get the ball to. They ultimately find the 85% free throw shooter. 54.3 left on the clock. Like they might have gotten away with the travel from Johnson when he caught it there in the corner, but recovered, got the ball to the right free throw shooter, catches it. One, two, three. Ooh. Yes. I think that's yeah, right cut in front the, of the bang, official. bang play. It's a hard call to make, but. Mo goes to the line, and it's pretty much automatic. First free throws of the night for Emoji Gibson. And a fitting that he's trying to close this one out at the line. He'll be in that closer role for them all season. As the grad student guard. A pirouette in the paint from Andrews. DK kicks it out. Rolla Maryland looking for a two here. And they might get an and one opportunity coming up. DK tapped that home. Draw a foul in the process. Remember, he really struggles at the free throw line, but here's another look. And they comes over to block the shot. We just have to keep attacking the rim. And yeah, this, is a, this is a tough spot for him to be in, though, at the line. And they fouled out. DK one of two at the line, went just 12 of 40 from the stripe a season ago. Well, 
Loyola takes this opportunity to talk over the ensuing possessions here. Officially, that you were in a fouled out. DK off the mark on the free throw, and then they foul Terry. Jalen Terry, a kid that was recruited by Tony Stubblefield originally to Oregon, then transferred when Stubblefield left as an assistant at Oregon to take the head coaching job at DePaul. Terry definitely bound to be a key player for this team at the guard spot. It's just so nice to have a couple guards who are automatic from the free throw lane, especially late in these games. I mean, all these conference games are going to come down to the wire. There'll be a lot of dogfights here on this court. When you have guys who can make smart decisions late and make free throws, it helps you win a lot of games. Terry said he learned a lot last season. He said it felt like a, a freshman year again for him, even though he's technically a sophomore. He steps up with a big moment there. Now Kenneth Jones, their leading scorer tonight. Love one from three here. Andrews drives and nearly had a chance at a three-point play as that one goes around and out. Just very patient. Just kept pounding the rock and good offensive players know how to draw fouls. The greats live at the free throw line. Even on those nights when you're not shooting it well or maybe you're a little undersized, you got to find a way to get to that line and get free points. Andrews averaged just under 14 a game a season ago. We're looking for him to be the leading scorer again this year, along with Kenneth Jones. Hoping to knock down a big free throw here. Does just that. Does just that. Seven point seven point. That's the for the ball in the game. Terry trying to get out of trouble. Goes to Gibson, does that. Now an 85% free throw shooter headed to the line. Terry trying to get out of trouble. Great patience by the ball. Move the ball backwards. Don't dribble it. Great cut by the ball. And that's the guy you want at the free throw line. Good poise. You guys haven't played a lot together, but they're still veterans. They've been in these situations many times in their careers. Tony Stubblefield brings his group of veterans together an average age on this football team is 21 and a half. So, one of the older teams in the country. However, for the most part, due to playing with each other, seven faces, five of those transfers. So, we're still building up the team chemistry. Your name fouled out. We talked about him. Felt like, Felt like he's, he's been, been here, here for a minute. All of a sudden, he's now a grad student. And we've seen his impact. He's been a veteran in that. He had a lot of pressure on him this game. game. Be, be the, the rim protector. Be the last line, line of defense. And what he did offensively was outstanding. We talked about that before the game. What can he bring at the offensive end? He's just been outstanding. He couldn't have played any better in this game. And things got a little scary there for the ball. They, they put, put him back, back in the game, game. I mean, it was blocked shot, it was steal around, around the court, court. it was close out on the shooter. Very impressed with his effort. Seven boards, one block. I mean, look, the this statistics got to be. I thought I, I, thought I saw, saw three, three blocks, blocks and like ten, ten adjustments by the offensive player. It definitely feels like there should be a, a shot adjustment stat, and you were able to all over that. I mean, I mean, Stumps are going to have to talk to them. Yeah, we're going home. We're not out of going home. There was one where he literally snatched it out of the air. I wonder if they cut it out of the block. Well, they should. Yeah, I agree with you. He's been outstanding. Just brilliant. Showed us a lot. 
in this game. An intimidating presence. Yeah, you think you've got to lay up and... Yeah, do a little pull here on social media. That'll be a lot of people. Well, if I'm the homer, I can put my two check marks on you. Uh, Just, Just back when you're playing, playing, what's the discussion after a season opener usually like? How does that differentiate from every other, other game of the season? Well, there are some, some guys who struggle in practice, let them get under the lights, and, and just play great. great. The first, first couple of games of the season show your teammates, teammates and your coaches who those guys are. So that discussion is great. And hey, he's better in the games than he is in practice. And boy, it's nice to have Maul on the team. And this guy coming off the bench. So those are really the discussions. The coaching staff gets to reevaluate. Hey, a lot of guys are great practice players. Coaches keep their job because guys play well with the lights come on. One last gasp for the Royal of Maryland. Aaron Knox down the field to make it a four point game. With three, three seconds, seconds to go. Adams with a still in the air here. Terry Pottle is fouled by DK. DK. Uh, he he needs, needs some misses, misses in a four point, point play. Paul has made seven, seven of the last eight, eight free throws. throws. This, this one should ice it. it. Yeah, yeah, critical. critical free throw, throw should be down the stretch. stretch. I mean, you, you miss, miss a bunch of those. Boy, all it comes down, down ties, ties this game. game. They, they don't, don't quit. quit. And it's so nice to have a team on the back row that plays under control like these guys do. Royal will miss eight free throws tonight. They'll be picking themselves to look at that stat. Ultimate the Williams win on open night. Tony Stubblefield kicks off his second season at the helm on a high note. Knocking off Chicago area native Tavares Hardy and his gritty Royal Maryland team out of the Patriot League. David Johnson with a career high in points tonight. He'll be very key for the ball moving forward. It was, it was a fun, fun one. We expected a matchup that was fairly evened out by a couple of injuries that we got word of prior to the game. And this Royal Maryland, Maryland team never quite gave up. up. Johnson, Johnson shares a nice, nice word there with Hardy. Your lady, the shot blocker for DePaul. DePaul. Very, Very well played, played game, game for the first game of the year. Give him credit, credit to the ball. That, that defense, defense was sound. Johnson's become a star. And, and for Loyola, the turnovers and free throws, throws really are hurt, but they're going to be a force as well. Good effort by both teams. teams. Yep. An experienced ball group trying to blend transfers and then punch them together to create chemistry. They did a nice job of that on opening night, coming out on top of the team resilient. 72-66 to the final from Windrush Arena in Chicago as the ball beats the wheel. For Jeff Settle, I'm James Morris Jr. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Oh.